الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continuing on in our study of نواقد الإسلام we reach the ناقد السابع السحر the seventh nullifier of Iman or Islam which is a sihr which is sorcery and we ask Allah the Almighty Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafiyah rizqan tayyib wa amalan mutaqabbilan may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ilman nafiyah beneficial knowledge wa amalan mutaqabbilan and, and, and deeds that are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala righteous deeds and rizq and ample provisions to spend in his cause and that which will be beneficial for us. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Imam Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala said As-Sabi' As-Sihr Wa minhu as-sarfu wa atfu faman fa'alahu o radiya bih kafir wa dalil qawluhu ta'ala وما يعلمان من أحد حتى يقولا إنما نحن فئنة فلا تكفر. إمام محمد بن عبد الله رحمه الله تعالى said the seventh meaning the seventh nullifier or knocker of Islam uh, sorcery and some of its types are using magic to cause discord between the man and his wife. And another type is using potions or magic to entice someone to have affection for someone. Therefore, whoever engages in sorcery or is pleased with using magic has disbelieved. And the evidence for this is the statement of Allah. And they did not teach anyone except they said, we are only a trial, so do not disbelieve. And this is in Surah, Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, verse one hundred and. Two. Sorcery is a comprehensive term, so it's a general term. It includes, uh, it refers to incantate, incantations, incantations, uh, potions, smoke, and other things which have an effect upon the heart, the body, and cause sickness, uh, or death and separation between spouses. The reason these practices are considered sorcery is because they cause a definite effect from unapparent causes. So something that which is hidden, things which do not appear related to the, uh, to the effect that they are, they're hidden. So this is also entitled or fits under the definition of sorcery. People who use sorcery or learn it or teach it are considered disbelievers by the majority of the ulama, the majority of the Islamic scholars. And this is due to the fact that many sorcerers worship jinn uh, to obtain information or seek their support to do evil like causing divorce or enchantment or causing sickness and disease. And this requires putting one's trust in the jinn or spirits and devils instead of Allah the creator of the heavens and earth so this is a type of shirk and this you find of course in a lot of contemporary in the contemporary context you find in a lot of films and movies uh, that deal with um, exorcism that deal with shirkiyat and sorcery and it has become so widespread that even in children's films in children's con uh, uh, children's cartoons, you'll find this, uh, you know, some, for, some form of shirkiyat and so forth. And what this causes is the believers begin to then think of sorcery in a very light way. And this is why it is very serious and very dangerous for us to have these concepts and then begin to think of sorcery uh, in a light way manner or thinking of turning to jinn in a light manner Th thinking that this is something that is a light matter which has no uh, serious consequences but in fact it uh, can either be a wasila a means to shirk or it can be direct shirk 
to where some people they even cooperate with the jinn they cooperate completely with the world of unseen and as we have heard from countless people who were in that world who were entertainers uh, former entertainers uh, some were rappers some were uh, actors and so forth and they uh, relate to relate stories of what it takes and what many people have done in order to climb the ladder of so-called success and a lot of them uh, had co cooperated with the jinn and sold their souls literally to the devils in order to gain fame in this life and to be mentioned on the tongues of people and to be heard and to have financial success. But in the Akhirah, in the hereafter, these people will be of the, uh, the, the losers because they sold their souls literally to the devil and some of them, some people have actually witnessed people uh, speaking to the devils, speaking to the jinn, and have heard the jinn themselves reply. And this shows us, and this is a, a scary world, and this is from the unseen. This is the world of the unseen that we normally don't uh, encounter. And it's a scary world, and it's something we should believe that it does exist. And this is from Iman, and as we've mentioned countless times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, after saying, uh, after, A'udhu billahi min shaitan ar-rajim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif la mim, thalika al-kitab Allah rayba fi, hudin lil-muttaqeen, alladhini yu'minun bil-ghayb, wa yuqimun salat, wa mimma razaqanahum yunfiqun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif la mim, thalika al-kitab Allah rayba fi, this is a book in which there is, contains no doubt, it's a guidance for uh, the pious. Who are the pious? Who is Ahli Iman? What is their characteristic? Those people who believe in the unseen. And part of that unseen world is the world of witchcraft and sorcery. And the jinn. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Jinn and throughout the Quran has also let us know that the creatures exist, that they're a part of the unseen, the jinn. And may Allah protect us from the evil jinn, ameen ya rabbil alameen. So people who use sorcery or learn it or teach it are considered disbelievers by the majority of the Islamic scholars. And we mention that this is a uh, type of, uh, that, that it can be a type of shirk. So the people who practice it, who teach it, who learn it, this is a for, form of disbelief they have fallen into. And this is because the one who is pleased with sorcery is just like the sorcerer. And whoever is pleased with shirk in polytheism is a polytheist. The evidence for this is the statement of Allah and they did not teach anyone except they said, we are only a trial, so do, do not disbelieve. And this is Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 100, and the 102nd verse. This refers to two angels who were sent by Allah uh, as a trial for the people. And when they were asked to teach sorcery or magic, they would warn against it and advise the people to stay away from it. And if the people persisted in their request, they would teach them. This shows that sorcery is disbelief, and that is why Allah said, so do not disbelieve. And so they were sent as a test. They were sent by Allah Azza wa Jal as a trial for the people, as a test for the people. And the people would ask them for sorcery and persist in this. And they would teach them and they would deny them this until they would finally teach them because their desires overcame them. And they were sent as a test. Letting us know that this act, that when you uh, are pleased with it and when you uh, engage yourself and involve yourself in sorcery, that this is disbelief. And I know a real story of an individual, he came to me once, and his wife was a non-Muslim, and he had embraced Islam, he had been a priest formally, I believe he said, he was a preacher formally, and his wife was from the Caribbean, where magic is widely practiced, and voodoo, and, and so forth, and his wife had become angry with him, and subhanAllah, he found in the pot, he became sick. 
and he found in the cooking pot one day, he found a pair of her underwear in there. And this is one of the way, ways that the people uh, distribute their kofriya, their sorcery, that they put spells on people and in this way, sometimes by clothing, sometimes by hair, as you see in the movies. But in fact, those people with real world experience, they will tell you that these are some of the ways through the bones, through tying knots in uh, clothing and, in, and, and, and so forth, and in hair, and, and as the voodoo practices of making dolls and uh, poking and causing pain to the people, that some of these are very real practices and real they involved a, a type of kufr and shirk that can cause harm if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows it to uh, be effective. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ And one of the best ways to defend ourselves is with dhikr and our strong iman and halal and righteous practices to protect ourselves from sorcery and protect ourselves from the evil eye and so forth by reading the Qur'an. Uh, is, is some of the best uh, forms of defenses is doing those things which increase your iman. And so it is imperative that the believer stays away from all of these kind of practices which involve sor uh, sorcery and shirk and kufr and any and all forms of, of working and cooperating with the jinn and cooperating with the unseen. Going to people who uh, even involving yourselves in horoscopes or uh, the people going to the um, the people with the crystal balls, the people with um, I forgot what the term the terminology is, but those people who uh, they claim to know some of the unseen, and sometimes they do have certain secrets that they have gotten from the devils, and this is how they entice people because someone will go to them and say, what he really said was true. I did have a divorce from my. Uh, previous husband named so-and-so or that such and such happened to me right after that because they received some uh, insight from the devils and it is said in an authentic hadith the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that some of this unseen knowledge is obtained from the devils that they will give you 99 lies for every one truth okay or that they obtain 99 lies for every one truth and that one truth is what deceives someone into believing them and into uh, cooperating with them and paying their fee to the to the people of shirk and kufr and zandaka so it's imperative for ahli iman not to be tested and to avoid these kind of practices in every <coughs> in every in all of its forms and manifestations and it seems for us who have never involved ourselves with these kind of things and in Ouija boards and so forth that it seems like a strange practice and it seems like it would be common sense. But in fact, I've learned that in many of the Muslim lands, you'll find that these practices are still practiced. It's practiced here in Saudi Arabia. And this is the land of Tawheed. So what about the rest of the places? What about Egypt? What about Yemen? What about uh, uh, Morocco? It's so well known the sihr that is practiced there. And I know many students of knowledge that uh, have the experience that have, you know, some of the people who have married and have been, had their relatives, uh, spells put on their relatives, and then the student of knowledge will have to come and look for the, for the where the person put the, the, the sihr, where they did it, and, they, and to break the spells. There are people who have experience in dealing with this. And there are people who have experience with exercising the jinn from people. And these are real practices. And it is very important that we believe in this and that we avoid it at all cost. Sorcery is used for different purposes. Uh, and one of the purposes mentioned to cause friction and marital discord between the husband and wife. And also it is used to cause pe uh, people to have affection towards one another when in normal circumstances they would not be attracted to one another. A person may be given a love potion, so to speak, and we've heard about this in our traditions, in our uh, customs before Islam for some of us, in the movies and so forth. But these are real uh, concepts that are thabit, that are affirmed 
in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet wasallam that people used to do in the time of the Prophet wasallam and after the Prophet wasallam that people practice these practice of magic and sorcery and with love potions and so forth. And these love potions are there in order to, to uh, attract a potential partner who normally might not find them attractive, but due to sorcery, they succumb to the person's desires. This all entails disbelief and is strictly prohibited in Islam. So it's very important to avoid it at all costs and avoid the people of shirk and avoid the people of sorcery at all costs because it is such a dangerous and kufri, uh, kufriya uh, set of practices. Also, people who are very charismatic in their speech and use their charisma to deceive others or spread false beliefs and doctrine are referred to as sorcerers. However, this is not the sorcerer that the sorcery that takes you out of the fold of Islam, but it's just also it also fits uh, the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi referred to it as a type of uh, uh, magic or hypnotism that the person who's very charismatic and you'll find this you'll find certain individuals that are so articulate in their speaking and not just articulate but they're so good at moving people and I can give you an example from our culture Louis Farrakhan is an excellent example that he will say he's very politically astute he, he knows the the uh, a lot about the deception in the political system. He knows a lot about the oppression of the African American and the other communities in America and even around the world. Uh, he speaks a lot about Libya. He knows these things and he has a tongue that can be deceptive. And through that, by hearing the truth of what he says, you can fall into the lies of what he says of the kufr belief. He will have you have people believing that maybe he's really a Muslim but in fact he still adheres to those beliefs even in his old age when he knows better of the shirk of, uh, of believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came in the form of a man and the hypnotism of his speech is his speech is he's very articulate he's very effective in delivering the message to the people to an oppressed people who can easily be mesmerized by his speech. So this is one exam example of how the tongue can be a deceptive. And likewise, there are people in Islam who have very uh, are very good at moving crowds. That doesn't mean this is a negative trait, always. But we want to be careful of the ones who move the crowds with negative and with evil and spreading evil. That they spread evil and they're able to move the crowds. This is what we want to be cautious of. A final note pertaining uh, to sorcery is that everything is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree and a sorcerer cannot affect or cause harm unless Allah decrees it to happen. This does not mean it is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather out of his infinite wisdom, he decreed it to be and all might and power belongs to Allah the Almighty. And this is why it's important for Ahli Iman to defend yourself from these nawaqid Nawaq al Islam, these nullifiers of, of, of faith by having strong Iman, by sitting in the gatherings of Khair wa Sunnah, by learning more about your religion in order to practice it properly, in order to stay away from the Shabahat, the doubtful manners, the doubtful matters, and the doubtful beliefs, and the Shahwat, and to help you control your own desires to stay away from the sinful things. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.